What a time to be alive, the age of information. So many people questioning creation. Come, take a seat or step outside to have a conversation. Let's listen, observe, and respond with compassion and truth. Welcome, everybody, to the Fearless Shepherds podcast. My name is Kyle Cassidy, and I'm joined here by one of the founding fathers, Austin. Austin, I always mispronounce your last name. Can you let the people know your name? You want to give it a try on air right now? Austin Dudich. <laughs> D-Duck. D-Duck. Mr. Austin, uh, blessed to call you my friend, and um, we've been on quite the journey these last couple of months uh, you want to tell the people where we met and a little bit about who you are? Yeah, absolutely. You no, know, we we met back, you know, roughly six months ago, and uh, life has really never not been the same since. We've had an absolute blast getting to know each other. But uh, yeah, we both live over here on the west side, uh, Los Angeles. We met in a sauna, LA Fitness. <laughs> we can never leave that out. But uh, you know, we've been out here trying to spread the good word trying to help out in the community, trying to put on and produce uh, events and gatherings for our friends to uh, come together and really get to know each other and the Lord. Amen, brother. Yeah, it was awesome to uh, be with you on our, our trip to uh, Derek Carr. Shout out the Altar Conference. We were able to gather with 10,000 plus men and, and really feel the presence of God and, and really feel purpose. I came back from that trip really aligning with what um, what we've been reading in, in the Bible. And Austin and I started a Bible study um, just about the same time that we met. And we've been gathering, sometimes big groups, sometimes just he and I, sometimes Clarissa, my beautiful girlfriend, he and I, and the community that we're building of people, not only of the Christian faith, but of all walks of faith to be able to come gather and discuss where they're at with their faith and where they're wanting to go um, with understanding where other people are coming from. And that's my my big calling as a, as a Christian is to hold space for others, whether you're Buddhist, whether you practice Islam, whether you are atheist and searching for some form or atheist and happy where you are. I really am fascinated by the human's understanding of outside of themselves and then also the human's experience with the lack of faith. And the main reason for this podcast is to just talk about not only spirituality and why I am a man of faith and I feel so called to uh, being a shepherd in this world, but also to discuss about the gifts that God has given us. For me personally, I'm a personal trainer. I teach yoga, but I teach yoga from a Christ consciousness standpoint. I love to create events. I love to listen to music. Amen. I love to dance. I love to sing. And uh, being in Los Angeles is such a blessing because we have this opportunity to be of service, to create abundance. And so this podcast is just a, another facet of what it is that we're creating. Absolutely. No, you, you said it very well. I think uh, to... This uh, this journey has seemed to like really accelerate as of late. I mean, you know, just in time for the summer, I should say. You know, things are getting warmer, and now you're you're feeling like you can move around a little bit more. Whereas we were, you know, gathering in our houses, we were doing Bible study here for such a long time, and then we had that possibility with a nice day. You know, a little bit nicer than a nice day here in LA, where people feel a little bit more comfortable to go to the beach. So I think yeah. that's another part of it too. Is that like I think that there's an opportunity for a lot more gatherings right now. And uh, that's where this really uh, thrives. Totally. Uh, you know, the good word. I feel very called to uh, continuing the Bible study, but outdoors. And um, I think that's where you, the listener, and the group of community um, can kind of give us your feedback of where you would, would like to gather. Because... Like God says, when two or more gather, he is present. And um, we'll get into the into the Bible here in a little bit. But um, I wanted to go a little bit more into depth of, you know, who we are and what it is that we we do. Um, so me, myself, like I said, I'm, I'm in the health and wellness realm. And, um, you know, my life is a storybook. And we'll get into a more in-depth uh, story of who I am, what I am, and why I am. I look forward to having all of my family and 
all of my mentors and friends and different people that have influenced me to become who I am on this podcast. But this is just an introduction to the Fearless Shepherds podcast. And I wanted to just talk about the city of Los Angeles. And um, so many people think of Los Angeles as this dirty, grimy hellhole. And I tell you what, you are a product of your environment internally. So as I have continued to be steadfast in my faith, practicing my prayers daily, not only when I want something or when I wake up or before I go to sleep, but throughout my day, I am in constant communication with God. Whether I'm happy, sad, confused, confident, God is my my right hand always. And I think I think as I've yeah, as I've seen this this city go through i've been here about four years from san diego big shout out to the squad down in sd but to be in los angeles before covid hit and you could tell there was just this 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 lack of community and then covid hit and we had two years of i mean bro a roller coaster ride of riots of man, you name it, bro. It was happening here in Los Angeles. And it was just confusion. And for me personally, I was in a place of darkness, a place of of confusion and and despair. And I really felt uh, the Holy Spirit kind of take hold of me and tell me that it was going to be okay and that I had nothing to fear. And in that moment, I really realized, you know, I need to become dedicated to my Absolutely. walk with, with faith. And when I did that, I saw different people come into my life. I started praying for brotherhood, mm-hmm. and brothers started coming to come into my life. I started praying for a queen. Clarissa came into my life. I started praying for better relationships with my family and with my friends and to be less of a yes man and more of a, of a godly man. And um, I think I see this city a lot differently as we've come out of COVID and we're able to gather again and we're able to, um, you know, for me personally, COVID never really was a time of, of a complete loss of hope. But when you're cut off from human beings and you are isolated, it's very easy for deception and the ultimate deceiver, the devil, mm-hmm. to pull your heart in ways that you start to feel a lack of purpose. He gets you when you're isolated. He gets you when you're isolated. Which is why these Bible studies were such a calling for me is to bring people together to talk about not only our triumphs and the things that we're doing well, but the things we're struggling with. And so this this podcast is going to be a lot of greatness and a lot of laughs and a lot of joy, but there's going to be tears. There's going to be anger. There's going to be discussions about the sticky stuff. And I think that's, that's religion. That's faith is knowing that God is the creator and the destroyer. It's hard to wrap our heads around God being this judge, but, uh, you know, I truly believe that God loves us so much that he gives us the opportunity to choose a road. And I'm, I'm choosing a road, especially this year in my life, of taking the road less traveled and being okay with doing what God tells me, not what the world tells me. And so I see Los Angeles a lot differently now than I ever have. And I'm really excited, like you said, this summer to hit the ground running and, man, cultivate community events, whether it's health, whether it's wellness, whether it's music. And we'll talk a little bit more about what you do. But Austin is a renowned DJ, and we are planning on a Fearless Shepherds music festival in the near future where we bring people together, celebrate God, praise his name and rather than go to a festival to escape we're going to go to a festival to be found yeah amen to that i mean the sky's the limit brother but i'm gonna i'm gonna chime in on on austin and uh it's been so great to see you hop into the event space like you have i mean everyone has it their own vision of what you know heaven on earth is like really come on and for to see you, you know, just so excited to tell me just, you know, about an hour ago about this experience you guys threw together yesterday. That's something special and you'll never, ever forget it. And it's going to it's going to blossom. It's going to really like turn into something where you're like, I think we need a bigger beach. <laughs> I mean, Doc Weiler is a public beach, but, you know, it maybe it may get too big. Totally. bro. There's a lot of space down there. But, you know, hey. 
if you just bet the five thousand, you just may have five thousand times five thousand. You know, <laughs> times five thousand. What I'm starting to stadium. realize is, don't put limitations on what God can bless you with. Hey, yeah. And God uh, bless Solomon. So Solomon, I just watched something. Um, he's the son of Abraham, and King Solomon was stepping into his his kinghood, and uh, he had a dream, uh, and. And he prayed to God for wisdom. And rather than pray to God for material things or pray to God for the strength to be the most valiant warrior, he prayed to God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so for me, my prayers have been shifting a lot lately of God, show me what it is that you want to use me for. Yeah, guide me. I'm a vessel. Take my hand. It's not about me. Amen. And so these these influencers and these people in Los Angeles that make it all about them and no judgment. I mean, whatever you want to do in this life, do it, but know that you can have a bigger influence and a bigger impact. If you are of service, you get so much more when you give. And for me personally, when I show up for people this morning, I was tired. I was at an event last night, help break down. The cleanup is just as important as the, uh, as the, as the party. And so it was fun. It was it was a collaborative effort, but I didn't get home till two, two a.m. And I had another event. That's why you posted the IG at two in the morning. Yes, sir. Amazing. <laughs> there you go, folks. We figured it out. I was so excited. I couldn't wait until the morning. I, I would love to DJ at one of these. We'll get to that. But it's about it's about the community because if it was just about me, I would have stayed asleep this morning. I would have said, ah. I'll get to it later. But because I had to show up for other people and because I wanted to bring God's presence into that event that we had today, we did an ice bath down at the beach, shout out the House of Clarity and some of the friends that we have down there. I'll probably have everybody from that crew on this pod. And it was an amazing experience. And when I was there, I no longer felt tired. And I haven't felt tired all day because it was such a joyous experience of bringing people together. But yeah, these, these events, man, it's only just beginning, but I'm really, really happy that what I'm praying for, God is not only giving me, but he's giving me more. And I think when you're living in alignment with your path and you are opening yourself up to be a vessel of his work, not yours, there's no end to the blessings. Amen to that. Yeah, absolutely. These, hey, these things are meant to be life giving. You know, like you're you're seeking the truth out in in this world, and it starts, you know, with your work on yourself. Like we've been working on ourselves for the past six months and stuff. Um, you know, I've even tried to do that within my own life and my own career, and making it kind of shine outward. Uh, making the simple steps from changing what music I'm playing, what music I'm making, and to really uh, steer away from what is, you know, such a cookie cutter mold that is existing with within music. I mean, there's some great songs and we see great talent out there and I would never ever, um, you know, disrespect talent. You gotta acknowledge it for what it is, it's a beautiful thing. Hey, you are also sick on the decks. You guys gotta see <laughs> Kyle on the decks. He's actually not that bad, I, I gotta admit. I was uh, when I saw him first DJ, <laughs> I uh, I definitely uh, put my hand over my mouth and I said, "Wow, we got another hot hitter." That, that's right. I was like, we had to call ourselves something. Yeah. No, I I see, I see such a um, a a blossoming in regards to people who are musically gifted come into my life. My grandmother took me to an aptitude test here in Los Angeles when I was a young lad. It's called Johnson O'Connor. And it's a, it's an aptitude testing facility where they take you through a lot of different tests. Long story short, I scored in the, in the top one percentile of rhythmic memory. So that's why I've always loved percussion drums. I always can hear the first note of a song and know exactly what song it is. So DJing came very naturally to me because it was, it's about pairing sounds and frequencies and rhythms to all um, collaborate and make a melody. So I think that's, uh, that's something that's been fun, but it's such an art. It's a true art. So seeing 
people like yourself who produce music and create a true fluidity in your set. Like you never really have, there's no breaks. There's always, it's a story. It's like you're, you're literally taking people on a voyage. What, uh, what inspired you to get into the music field and to go a little bit deeper into why you've chose different music styles and um, how your faith has kind of assisted in that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it had to have started, you know, I, I started having, you know, visions of like what, uh, you know, being in front of crowds. I wasn't really quite sure what it was going to be. Then that started back in college. Um, it it shifted over into entertainment when I moved to Richmond after college in 2016. And I had uh, met a friend, Chris Rogers, and he introduced me to, you know, like, hey, this is my studio. And I grew up, you know, playing a little bit of guitar and piano when I was a young kid, but uh, never really mastered both those instruments. You know, just had grown up learning basic structures of songs and whatnot. But it wasn't until after college that I was like, just, you know, fully in love with house music and electronic music. I loved every bit of it. And uh, then I started getting into it then. And then it developed from DJing and then into producing, uh, much producing much later on, but uh, always was in the studio for the past few years. The pandemic never really stopped me. Mm. And I felt like I had gotten several hundred plus studio sessions in and um I, f I feel very blessed i'm very grateful for the fact that i got to learn from so many great artists and producers i, I wish i could you know give them all a shout out but they know who they are yeah all the work's been done covid gave artists a lot of time to work on their craft so much time and you you created a song that was um it was uh, the first show that i saw you at where you did your release of See Me and the lyrics of the song talking a little bit about how these drinks don't do it for me. Mm -hmm. And you're now on, what, six months sober? Or are you a year? No, no, I started uh, December 31st, January 1st, I mean, January 1st this year. And I originally was doing it as part of uh, kind of taking care of myself. I knew that uh, I hadn't really done the best with with drinking overall, like in my, my career, you know, he had some bad days or whatever, but, uh, I, you know, I felt like, Hey, why not take care of myself? Let's focus on taking care of myself in 2022. And after that, I just saw a lot of changes within my own life. And I was like, you know what? Hey, might as well let this keep going. I'm, I'm on a roll right now. And here we are, you know, it's, it's been so, you know, April through April, four months, 15 months through today, so 135 days or so. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great. You know, I'm not even counting anymore. I'm just like, just going. I just feel like taking care of myself, and that's really the change, I think, from many years prior in uh, my 20s, uh, turning 28. Hey, I feel like I can be taking better care of myself. Yeah. And that way I can take care of other people a little bit more. I can relate to that big time. Um, since February, I haven't smoked or drank. And it's kind of like, it's it's interesting how the the mind of a, a young man works, of like being so enveloped in your own life and your senses and wanting pleasures and different things like that. And then you get those things and it's an unquenchable thirst. So you want more. And in my path in regards to faith, you know, early 20s, it was about me. It was about, you know, God, I'll, I'll get to, I'll get to your plan later. And, uh, you know, you hit speed bumps and you, and you fall, you scrape up your knees, you have to learn. And then you keep trying to do it on your own. Cause you're like, ah, I'm resilient. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And God continues to give you signs of, Hey, maybe, maybe don't do that. Maybe, maybe this is a better path for you. And family will sit you down and have a conversation. And you're like, ah, I got this guys. I, I know what I'm doing. And, listen, um, son. Yeah, <laughs> listen, son. It's been it's been fun, uh, really allowing the Holy Spirit to to guide you because I get so high off of the Holy Spirit, I don't really feel called to any form of mind altering substance, and it's never been the case in the last decade of my life. 
you know, I've, I've frequented the use of marijuana and frequented the use of alcohol, marijuana more than alcohol, alcohol, kind of more of a casual. And then it's a party thing. You know, it's in our generation and even our parents' generation, it's such a social thing. Um, but I never really liked the way it made me feel. Whereas marijuana was more of like a, a decompressor and I, di I enjoyed the creativity it would create and this and that. But there came a point in January of this year when I just had this epiphany where God was like, this doesn't serve you anymore. The plans that I have in your life are bigger than getting high. And it was like, okay, I, I don't smoke anymore. And so when I'm around people that still offer it to me or I have friends that still do, rather than cast judgment on them and say, you need to clean your life up, it's like, I'm okay. And we can still hang around each other, but I've actually influenced some people to be like, maybe I don't need to do this. And it's not like I'm trying to do that. It's just that happens organically when people can see you don't need this thing outside of yourself to be yourself. Have fun. So it's... The influence I, actually is very real. I can see it even within some of my friends. And, you know, whether it's, you know, just a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years, you know, as long as you have that commitment to yourself and you realize, hey, maybe this isn't good for me. Right. And you cut it out of your life. You should see, you know, the blessings that come from that. It's it's pretty rad. Definitely. I think uh you start to see that those simple decisions, those small little decisions start to impact the people that you surround yourself with. So it goes from something subtle, this little shift, to then all of a sudden pretty drastic changes. Now I've built a community of people that, yes, yeah, still dibble dabble here and there in, in, you know, either of those substances, but they're more so drawn towards these events. They're more so drawn towards inquiring towards their faith and coming to these Bible studies and talking more about, hey, you're in the gym five times a week. Like, where do you get that motivation from? Or this is a way that you eat and you're starting to track your micros, your macros, your calories, your protein. I kind of want to do that too. Where do I start? And so it's, it's fun to step into a role of practicing what you preach. And I think that's as we get into our latter twenties, as we're preparing for our thirties, I'm 29, you're 28. Clock's ticking, bro. Time's not stopping. So if you take the reins of your life and then you say, God, you're the horse. I'm going to take the reins and then I'm going to let go of the reins. First, you got to take the reins and you got to steer yourself onto the, the path that's not traveled. And then I think it's fun to watch, you know, God say, all right, let go of the reins and let me take you. And so I think that that decision is one that I definitely tell people if they're, if they're stuck in a rut or they're looking for inspiration or they're finding a difficulty finding consistency, I ask them, are you abusing substance or are you, you know, watching porn or are you um, abusive in your relationships or do you, you know, say yes too much, which is something that I struggle with big time. Um, knowing your limits. Exactly. Knowing the things that stretch you thin or that take you off of the path. You have to be real with yourself and you have to be able to have people around you that can tell you those things without you getting bent out of shape or, or defensive. And so I've been really inviting in friends that hold me accountable and sharpen steel with steel. Let's go. Which is why you're in the building, bro. Oh, my man. It's, uh, Love you, bro. Come right on. back at you, dude. Come on. So in Come regards on. to the Bible studies, we've been, yep. uh, we've been doing a practice where we, we pray over the Bible and we open to we open to a space that the Holy Spirit divinely guides us to. So Austin prayed over the Bible. And you open to a, a chapter in Romans if you want to uh yeah. read that to us. So we are gonna read out of Romans chapter six. The sun, you know, set during this uh podcast. But now we are uh sitting with low light, but I'm still going to be able to read this. From uh, uh, Romans 6, 
What shall we say then? Should we continue to live in sin so that God's grace will increase? Certainly not. We have, we have died to sin. How then can we go on living in it? For surely you know that when we were baptized into union with Christ Jesus, we were baptized into union with his death. By our baptism, then we were buried with him and shared in his death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the death by the glorious power of the Father, so also we might have live a new life. Live a new life. For since we have become one with him in dying as he did, in the same way we shall be one with him by being raised to life as he was. And we know that our old being has been put to death with Christ on the cross, in order that the power of the sinful self might be destroyed, so that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For when we die, we are set free from the power of sin. Since we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that Christ has been raised from death and will never die again. Death will no longer rule over him. And so because he di died, sin has no power over him. And now he lives with his life in fellowship with God. In the same way you are to think of yourselves as dead, so far as sin is concerned, but living in fellowship with God through Christ Jesus. And yeah, I just wanted to pull that up because I've been reading Romans recently. And I just was, you know, feeling called to, to read it today. And uh, along with reading Proverbs every single day, um, there's, you know, a chapter for every single day of the month. If you haven't, you know, gotten yourself into a rhythm or you're feeling in a funk, it's a great place to start and seek wisdom. Um, I think that there's a lot of wisdom found in the, these verses too. And Romans, you know, talks a lot about how Christ has such a larger impact um, for people in the tough times and stuff and exactly how you can really work on yourself to be such a blessing to others you know it's not much more of like a story of uh you know like the old testament and, and kind of like the history and stuff but it, romans is really about you working on yourself and talking about sin in a very real context um and being very real and uh there's a lot of hope out of romans and uh a lot of beautiful things to take away from this passage as well Definitely. The book of Romans is one that uh, we read It's about a month ago. We read a passage. I believe it's, uh, it's chapter 6, verse, is it 13? It, it, it speaks on how if it's not based on faith, it's based on sin. Yes. I think that that... Uh, we'll have to, we'll have to pull it. that up, but um, I've been reading a book called Foundations of Our Faith. It's by the Good Shepherd Institute, and they're actually based out of Virginia. But there's a, a passage on salvation, and it says, In what way must we believe? It says, uh, so it's chapter 14. Yeah, it's chapter 14, verse 23 out of Romans. And anything that is not based on faith is sin. I mean, that's, that's cut and dry, simple and plain. And what's beautiful is the Holy Spirit is always within us. So we always have that inner voice that tells us, hey, you probably shouldn't do that. Always. Yep. But as you continue to slap that away and say, I know better, that voice becomes more distant. And then that voice becomes almost non-existent. So you're hardening your heart and even more so your soul to being divinely guided. And you become, sadly, possessed by worldly pleasures or demonic uh, influences, which sadly is the domain of this world. The Prince of Darkness runs this place. And Jesus came here to let us know, hey guys, it's pretty simple. Love God and love each other. The rest of it's going to fall into line. Misery loves company, so the devil's trying to twist that, manipulate that, and deceive us into doing things that are wrong. Yep. And it's pretty simply stated, if it's not based on faith, it's based on sin. And if you're sinning, what are you becoming? And in here it says, so in what way must we believe? Again, the Bible has the answer. It says that we must accept him, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior and depend on him to take us to heaven. These have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, 
and that through your faith in him you may have life. That's John 20, 31. And it's amazing to read uh, scripture from the apostles. Yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, amazing. To, to think of these people all having their own <laughs> lives and their own struggles and triumphs and jobs and families and Jesus just comes into their life and they say, I follow you now. <laughs> Nothing else matters. So that's kind of the stage of my life that I'm in. It's like I still have these goals, these aspirations, these dreams, but there's been a lot of stuff that has fallen by the wayside because it doesn't matter anymore. Those were intentions of my my heart. Now I'm asking God, what is the intention towards your heart? Because I want to be like Jesus. So a lot of the earthly desires start to fall by the wayside because it's not in alignment with our true purpose here. It says, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we must also turn away from sin. It doesn't say we must turn away from sin sometimes. It says we must turn away from sin. We must repent and ask God for Jesus' sake to forgive us and make us clean. And so many people are turned off by religion because of the repentance aspect of asking for forgiveness for our sins. And sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. It's like, God's all loving. It's like, you know, I'm sorry, God, like, I'm just going to be better. But there's this act of surrender that's pretty powerful when you admit your fault. And when you're in an argument with a friend, it's very difficult when you know you're in the wrong to admit your fault. And so I think as our father, God is asking us to own what it is that we're failing at. God's not making us fail. We make us us fail. And so it goes on to say, uh, if we ask him to do this, we must also trust that he does forgive and cleanse us. So by simply asking for this forgiveness, that's all he asks for. If it's genuine and it comes from a place of true intention, we are forgiven. In John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins to God, he will keep his promise and do what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. This acceptance of Jesus as Lord and Savior is done simply by talking to him as you would to a friend. So we've been talking a lot about prayer, the mm -hmm. power of prayer, and the two-way conversation of prayer. Yeah. So often we pray to God and we request things or we, you know, we have a, 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 an intention that is somewhat selfish. Whereas if you start to shift your prayer to as if you were talking to a friend that was sitting right beside you, the Holy Spirit comes in and it might not come in right away. But if you allow yourself to sit in stillness, and this is what I teach in meditation. Meditation, the monkey mind immediately starts to drift. What am I doing later? Oh, I have bills to pay. Oh, my girlfriend, what's she doing? Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's the same thing when you're praying. Praying is like meditation. Jesus, in the Bible, it says he took a step away from the disciples many a times to just sit by himself and meditate and pray. And when we do that, we are speaking with our Father. And it almost makes me like, there's, there's a lack of words to describe what prayer really is but a conversation with your creator and allowing him to talk to you. That's what, that's what it's, that's what faith is, is knowing that he's going to divinely guide you. Absolutely. And he's going to forgive you of your sins. Yeah. Just tell God that you want to accept the forgiveness he offers. Perhaps you could say this in words of your own, dear father, I recognize that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin, and I ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse me and keep me from all wrongdoing. I accept the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, who died for me. I take him now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. Amen. And once you sincerely pray these things and build upon them, you start to create a consistency to be able to pray throughout your day. It's not just when you start your day, not just when you finish your day, not just when you're eating food, but through the many different aspects of life. And I think it's easy to pray and celebrate when things are going good. But when trial and tribulation strike, how do you respond? 
I think that's a direct testament of a true Christian and of a true fearless shepherd is to be resilient and steadfast in the faith no matter the circumstances. Because in the Bible it says Christians are going to be persecuted for our beliefs. And when you look around, you see a lot of darkness. You see a lot of, of debauchery. And you see people looking at anyone who is vocal about their faith in a way of mockery. And so rather than hide, I think we are being called as Christians to be lions. Absolutely. And to stand Absolutely. up against the schemes and the wickedness. And like it says in Ephesians, put on the full armor. Amen to that. Knowing that we are protected. Yeah, I think that uh, when you really are grateful and see the power that... Uh, God has in your life and how he's just always delivering blessings all the time. And if you start you know, trying to think that your plan is better at any moment, those blessings can't really come to you because God's not, you know, you're not on the same wavelength. Yeah. You got to be in tune with the super, you know, you got to be in tune with the Holy spirit. You have to be always listening to the Holy spirit in all aspects of your life. And that's when, you know, things can really turn around for you. That starts with, you know, removing drinking it removes from you know these things that the world says is like oh it's okay to to continue to do like i mean if it's just an everyday habit or whatever it is that's you feel like you can cut out of your life i mean you should definitely address it and it shouldn't Amen. it shouldn't rule you it shouldn't rule a majority of your week you know if it's not good for you at all then just avoid it correct <laughs> avoid it if it's not faith based it's sin isn't it funny, though, that our society promotes it, actually? Like, it's on every commercial, billboard, liquor store, around every corner. Everywhere. It's, it's, but it's a way to sedate the population. Correct. It's a way to control people. Correct. And it's, it, if you and it's a business. It's a business controlling people. It's, it's insane. Break free from it, and then you start to open up your eyes to a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No doubt. Aladdin. <laughs> Pull up the Aladdin real quick. Oh, man. Yeah, I think the... God is so good, though. God is so good. At it, the end of the day, yeah. he's in control. Mm -hmm. And I think the schemes of the devil try to trick us into thinking that, you know, we are helpless. We have no power. And once you take back the power of your own will, like we spoke of earlier, you can influence others to do the same. And it's not that everyone needs to go cold turkey sober or start Bible studies of their own. But if you start with one day, and you say, hey, I'm going to wake up early today. I'm going to go to one of Kyle's events, do some workout, do some yoga, or maybe, you know, do an ice bath. You do something good for your body. And then you eat well. God bless this earth with food. And food is one of the best blessings in life. Um, you put good into your body from a consumption standpoint, but then you also consume good material. So rather than being on your phone all day or watching TV all day and being distracted and sedated, you open a book, especially the holiest book of all. You go outside and appreciate nature. Engage in worship. Engage in worship. Engage in conversation Engage. that is lengthy and able to go um, without int uh, interruption. Yeah, even productive, fruitful, things that are building each other up. You know. Correct. I don't want even more than a few percent of the conversation to even go a little bit sideways. You know, I want it to continuously build because momentum is not just you know in the physical or with gravity or with you know anything else it it actually exists with music mm -hmm. exists with how we talk to each other if you're just continuously building each other up man you just may form the best you know two-man volleyball team on the planet come you on know? <laughs> golf golf uh, i just had a, an electric light bulb in my in my brain when you're talking about that of like when you allow a conversation to truly develop, that electricity that is being exchanged, synapses are firing in the brain because of what you said. 
So in turn, now a new idea has come to fruition in my mind that wasn't there prior to you speaking. And like God says when two or more people gather, I think that's the transfer. It's the transfer of His Spirit. And really, in the Bible it says Her Spirit, the Holy Spirit is feminine. And that's always been a question of mine of like the divinity and the masculine, the Father and the Son, but the divinity and the feminine and the Holy Spirit and the Mother Mary and this this virgin giving birth to Jesus. Very hard for my human mind to wrap around that. But there's no by chance in the Bible. Everything is perfect. And God's creation, you and I, this world, all the people in it is perfect. The debauchery and the destruction and the evil, it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve and the ultimate deceiver. And the two books that the devil hates the most, Genesis and Revelation. Genesis talks about the devil, his schemes, how he's going to manipulate you, how he's going to bring you to the dark. And Revelation talks about he will not win. <laughs> his time will come. And that's something that was so great at Derek Carr's conference, the altar conference, the first pastor do you remember his name i i actually don't remember his name ah. i'll look it up and i'll i'll talk about it at the uh, the next pod but he spoke about revelation from the get-go he came in mr platt david okay. platt yes david platt. david With platt the rope yes and the red the analogy oh, of the rope oh my gosh. he stretched the rope across the stage and he said this rope goes on forever forever and ever and ever. And at the tip of the rope, there was a little bit of red tape. And he said, we humans are so funny. We focus on this red tape. And not only just this red tape, but the little third of the red tape, our lives and the prime of our lives, rather than the eternity that awaits us at this moment, which is the end of the red tape that's coming for all of us. Death is inevitable. So faith for me allows you to not look at death as this scary thing, but allows you to live each day knowing that death is coming. So you live each day with gratitude that God gave you life, that you were able to have another chance to be of service, to inspire, to uplift, and to inevitably save. As shepherds, it's kind of on us to be the light in this world. And so you don't want to have the savior mentality as Christians. I don't think it's our job, but I do think it's our job to plant seeds and to shine light through our actions. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that like we should be going too aggressive in, in terms of like trying to save people. That's no. just not, that is not what our job is, but we can be a light for others and show them that there is alternatives to, uh, just meeting other people, going out, and carrying on about their daily life. There's just so many other alternatives to uh, what people think is the norm or what they should be doing or what they see their coworkers doing. Just think about that at a major corporation where you have everyone who comes in out of college thinking what everyone else around me is doing must be normal. Mm -hmm. If you got a group of 300, you got a group of 500 that goes into a corporation or whatever, you know, the, that, that can be a trap. There are so many different things in this world where people get into circumstances and they think, oh, because everyone else is doing it, it must be okay. Right. But that's the farthest thing from the truth. Yeah, there will be, and I think this is happening because of COVID, and we don't need to get too deep into COVID, but I, I truly believe that COVID by isolating us really helped a lot of people who were on the fence about faith find their faith because isolation can do two things it can create hopelessness or it can create hope and hopelessness can only go on for so long before the human heart needs to find some inspiration to keep going and for me personally that's what came out of COVID was a reinvigorated, 
re-inspired reigniting of my faith and then this purpose laid path towards this fearless shepherds movement and it came to me in prayer I was asking god okay you know all the gyms are closed all the studios are closed everything that i knew to be secure is gone what am i supposed to do he said you don't need to depend on anyone outside of yourself to do what you do but i want you to do it through me which started the spirit movement there we started go, baby. The fearless shepherds and so whether i'm mm -hmm. training whether i'm teaching yoga whether i'm giving advice and stepping into a, a life coaching mentoring role whether i'm helping people with their nutrition whether i'm putting on events and teaching people they can party without getting drunk or high whether I'm having a Bible study and talking to people about different aspects of Christianity and of other faiths. I think Jesus was hanging out with people in the, in the synagogue, but he was also hanging out with the sinners and lepers and the people who were lost because the world needs that now more than ever. And I think the Christian faith has gotten a bad rap because of the judgment and because of the the damnation of only focusing on people's wrong rather than looking at the divine light within them. And I feel called to the Fearless Shepherds movement being exactly that, of showing up as you are, being able to hear constructive criticism without getting defensive, and then also bringing something to the table. My dad used to always say, if I was bickering or I was teasing one of my, you know, siblings, we're sitting down at the dinner table. He said, you shut your mouth now. You didn't bring anything to the table. This is my food. Like, I provided this meal. You should be grateful. It's kind of the same thing with God, our Father. He's like, I provided you with life. Who are you to judge this other person? You don't know their story, what they're going through or why they're doing what they're doing. But you can be a divine light in their life to get them out of that rut onto a path of righteousness. Absolutely. I think that, like you said, you know, we should be grateful for what we, we have. Like, your, your dad's like, I provided the food. I mean, shut your mouth. Like, don't complain. We, I mean, even I complain today, but... We're at human. The, at the, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, if if you're focusing on be, being grateful for all these blessings that you are being given from God, um, that's that's really what it's all about. You got to focus on the blessings, Amen. count them, count them every single day, and it should reflect in how you live your life and how you are able to, you know, treat other people, work with other people, and then eventually you know, be that light for them and they'll get attracted to the light just like bugs. <laughs> just Straight like, up. I mean, just like flowers. Yeah. Just like us. Yeah. Can't survive I, long without the sun. People love positive energy. Mm. They always go to it. And, you know, we all we always talk about good energy and bad energy within friend groups and whatnot. But mm -hmm. as long as you're seeking the good in the friend groups and, and you're finding that over time you're even building a friend group that is just all focused on positive energy, you know, that's, that's when you personally can also thrive. Mm -hmm. That's when you can personally grow and you can really take everything and say, you know, wow, my life is really changing from just my cir close circle of friends. And then it becomes a massive festival of a close circle of friends. Come on, baby. There's no limit to this. What did we say? You build the temple one brick at a time. That's right. You don't, Look at the whole temple. And I got that from Modest Yahoo. Big shout out to my boy Modest Yahoo. If you're ever in a rut, turn on some of his music. He'll get you out of it. But you build the temple up one brick at a time. So you take one day of good choices, healthy habits, and good people. I think that's more contagious than COVID or any other thing in this world that is being told to us as a detriment. I think the the energy in prayer, there's an old proverb that 
there was a, a sage who was so in tune with his relationship with God that one of his enemies poisoned his food. But he prayed over his food because he prayed over anything that he put into his body. He prayed with such intention and such deliverance, he didn't know he was being poisoned. The food he ate was no longer poisoned. That's the power of God. We are divinely protected. And the devil doesn't want us to think that, know that, or trust that. So that's what this is all about. The Fearless Shepherds movement is about reigniting the flame in all of us to know that we are divinely guided, divinely protected, and we are abundantly blessed. God does not want to bless us scarcely. God does not want us living in poverty. God does not want us living in fear, in disease, in turmoil. But it starts with the family. So to see our culture change, we need to stop putting our time, energy, and effort towards debauchery and start putting it towards divinity. Absolutely. And uh, it starts so with you. Truth in that. It starts with you, you know? It does. It starts with the little things. It starts with the very, very small things. And, you know, they say, you know, healthy habits, you know, that if you build it over like three weeks, it really becomes... A habit in your ingrained. life. Ingrained. Yeah, it's ingrained at that point. You know, you go to the gym for three weeks straight. Then Gains. Then <laughs> hey, add on some protein powder in there. You heard me. <laughs> don't forget about that. I mean, That's free advice right there. Yeah, do not forget about that. And make, make sure it's the good kind. Do not put a bunch of nasty stuff in your body. That's True. That's for sure. True. Read the label. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't mind the extra creatine if they're throwing it in there. I mean, come on. <laughs> You gotta have a juicy pump. Yeah, it's yeah, beach you, season, baby. Yeah, you just have to have a, some vegetables and whatnot. Come on, come on. You gotta loosen up the joints a little bit, right? So going into this week ahead, Austin, what is a what is an intention that you have? I know you got a show coming up. If you want to tell the people out there listening what uh, what they can look forward to. Yeah, yeah. For uh, for anyone who's interested in a show at this upcoming Saturday in Los Angeles, actually in Hollywood, um, at Academy. Um, I'll be playing and spinning some house music from 9.45 to 11.30 before uh, Stephen Wright, who's the direct, uh, direct support, and then Cedric Gervais. Amazing. And last, uh, the close off is AWP, who I met uh, actually a month ago. Nice guy. Super cool. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's very special um, evening for me because this is what I would say is my biggest show in since 2019. Let's go. Um, since my last show at Echo main stage. stage. Yeah, main stage. Since my last show at Echo Stage. So it's a big performance. Um, it should be packed. We definitely have a, a group. I mean, we're six days away or so, but we definitely have over uh, 50 people already coming, and it, sh it should, the numbers should just keep going up. I, as we keep pushing towards closer to the event, it should be a very special time, and I'm very grateful for so many people that are, you know, coming to this event already and those that are about to purchase their ticket or come on or those praying for me back home you know it's going to be a very special evening and i can't wait for it to go down it's gonna be great i'm so uh stoked to see where we were at uh you know when we went to vegas and to see where we're at now in regards to cultivating abundance and connections and I'm just proud of you, dude. I'm stoked that you're you're stepping into what it is you know you're capable of and always knew. But sometimes isn't it funny how we we kind of start to to doubt or to fear or I that's yeah, that's definitely something that I tried to figure out within my own life is like why was there so much doubt? What was holding me back? And it seriously is sin. Yep. Sin is actually what creates doubt. Yep. Anxiety. Depression, sin. Because then you can't look in the mirror. You're a you're a fraud. Because if you're trying to live a life, here take some medication. Exactly. That's a that's a band aid. Exactly. That's a band that's a band aid that society is, is, is look. I I even took it too. I took some Lexapro. So did I. And and the thing is is I think that this world should know that there that is not just the option. That mm -hmm. is not that shouldn't be your permanent fix that should be the easy option it's the easiest option to pop a pill yep. once a day 
But the thing is, is if you don't work on yourself, then you'll never, ever know exactly what else is so good out there for you. Because those are, those are medications that were, what did they do for the last thousands and thousands of years? They worked on themselves. Mm -hmm. They seriously just worked on themselves. They went in and just off to take care of themselves. And it maybe didn't work in terms of like medicine, in terms of like, you know, hey, someone, you know, had a boulder land on their uh, lower half of their <laughs> leg and then they can't, you know, hunt and gather, you know what I'm right. saying? So, God bless Western medicine in that regard. Yeah. But for the majority of time like before technology especially i always have a great meditation on like life before technology of dealing with your problems through thought prayer meditation healthy habits healthy habits that's really what it is it's important to take care of yourself yeah. and uh i think that as long as you know there are a few takeaways from today i would i would say that if you're just hearing this and, and you're curious to learn more or if you're trying to figure out how you can start making an impact in your own life right now, I think you should go back to to what Kyle was talking about earlier. You know, be in the word. Also, you know, worship, be grateful um, and find the little things that are taking hold of your life right now and immediately cut them out. If, if you, you know, stumble along the way in that process of cutting it out of your life, you know, look to God. That That is your number one source to go to for any and all of your issues and problems. And you don't have to be worried about anything anymore yep. once you completely commit yourself to him. It takes time to feel that peace. It does take time to feel that peace. And there are rough times that come up. But as long as you realize that that is the number one resource, the number one source of all life, everything that you possibly need, for that piece, then you know that's when things get really good. I think it's amazing that uh, we circled it together with tangible steps that we all can take as humans. But it's realizing that as you step closer into your faith, there's going to be more hurdles to jump. Because again, the devil does not want you walking in alignment at the right side of God. So knowing. As a human being, you will fall short for the rest of your days. But like we read earlier, being open and ready to ask for forgiveness, to admit your fault, and to not do the same thing twice. So yeah, my intention this week is to is to really go into um, everything that I'm cultivating with full confidence, knowing that God is guiding me. And... Just surrendering to my expectations and allowing God's expectations to really flow through me and just so just feeling so blessed and so grateful. But yeah, just to continue to create community here in West Los Angeles and beyond. I would love to throw some events down in San Diego. I have a lot of connections down there. So squad listening at home, let's start brainstorming ways we can do ice baths, music, fitness, all that good stuff, Bible study. And uh, I say we finish with a prayer. It's been awesome chatting it up with you, man. An hour goes by quick. Yeah. But uh, you, know, you were saying, you know, we're just going to do this for three minutes. That's, <laughs> and now you, get, you got me hooked after three minutes. And now it lasted an hour. I thought it was, I thought it was like three minutes. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to have plenty more conversations, Austin. You're going to be a regular on the show. And you are a founding father of the Fearless Shepherds. I started this with you. And I'm so grateful for your friendship, brother. I am so grateful for you and our friendship and everything that you have shown or told me has just been fruitful and productive and and we've really gone through some some great things and some some valleys as well but we are really really focusing on the great things and the great things that god has given to us stepping into the kingdom brother absolutely dear god uh thank you so much for this sacred sunday this beautiful beautiful sunday to be able to gather with, with friends this morning and just share your light. And I pray that each one of them was able to get home safely and and just feel your presence throughout their day and, and, and just pour that out into their, into their families, their friends, their relationships. I pray that uh, 
this evening, this podcast starting, that it just continues to to gain momentum, to grow, and to touch the lives of those that need to be touched and inspire those that need to be inspired and, and really just bring forth conversations with all the people that you've brought into my life, family, friends, acquaintances. I, I look forward to seeing where you take this and uh, I just trust in you. I love you and I am so grateful that you have given me life, you have given me liberty, and I pray for every single soul in this in this earth to have that same liberty, that we can feel what freedom really feels like, that we can feel what your kingdom feels like here on earth. I pray for every heart to soften and and every mind to be guided towards divinity rather than debauchery. And uh, I pray for health. I pray for the second half of May. Man, it's amazing. May is halfway through that we can be present day in and day out, continue to stack bricks. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, and Austin, please add if if you have some prayers as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Lord. Um, We just, you know, want to thank you for such a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. It uh, doesn't beat it. Nothing beats this place. Mm. But... uh, (laughs) Except San Diego. San Diego's up there. <laughs> but uh but Lord no, we are so grateful for today and the chance that you know Kyle and I can spend together and, you know, read and learn more about you and talk about you and and uh I'm just excited for this week for so many people who are, you know, on the come up and I'm just so thankful that Kyle and got to you know, show his, his love for others and for you to others uh, last night. Um, you know, these are some beautiful opportunities and they're, they're given they're from above and we, Lord, we just want to say thank you for, for everything you're putting in our lives. Mm-hmm. And if anyone out there, you know, is, uh, struggling right now, just look to Jesus as your one and only answer for everything and he will make your path straight. Hallelujah. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 It's amazing how quickly conversation goes when you're speaking about life and God. A lot of these questions that can spark fear, spark judgment. That's what this podcast is all about. Really, that's what life is all about, is to to step into faith with a yearning for knowledge. So if you want to learn more, if you want to donate to the cause, my name is Kyle Cassidy. I am the founder of The Fearless Shepherds, and I cannot do this alone. So I would love to hear from you more. You can follow our movement on Instagram or TikTok at Fearless Shepherds. My personal account, Kyle Cassidy Fitness on Instagram, or shoot me an email, spiritmovement3 at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. God bless.